And we are live. Welcome to the expansive podcast, our new weekly show that we are also doing to uh, really sort of enrich the experience of the podcast. So if you're listening to this in your car at the moment or on your jog, also know that you can tune in live to the podcast every Wednesday at 3 p.m. South African Standard Time. Even though today's episode, we are recording at 10 o'clock South African Standard Time on a Thursday because life sometimes happens. But as always, uh, we are here, we are ready to have a great time with you, and thank you for listening. And of course, on the other side of my screen, my ever-elegant co-host, John Sane. John, how are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. It's uh, great to be here, as always. Uh, still trying to figure out how to share everything. Eric, we need to get better at this. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing, but what's up, everybody? Great to have you here. And Eric, you so great, uh, graciously said life happens. In fact, it was me. Uh, I happened. I uh, was supposed to record this from the business lounge in Johannesburg International. And because I haven't been traveling uh, at all, um, this first trip that I've done this year, I forgot my shampoo, my MacBook dongle, my um, credit card, my FNB credit card to get into the into the lounge. I mean, it was just absolute like chaotic. Um, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric, for putting up with my lack of experience in uh, packing. Um, and to everybody uh, who's listening, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's always great to have all these new people joining us on this journey of the expansive. And after what feels like months and months, we finally got our logo right, our website mm -hmm. is live, we got all our new covers right. Tell me about uh, that experience for you, Eric. Yeah, it's been great. You know, I think we we both always trying to uh, refine our personal images and like obviously, obviously like if you put the two of us together then um, that's going to be on overdrive so there's been a lot of back and forth <laughs> yeah. to get it just right and then oh it's just like the shadow isn't quite right here it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Kind of detail that just yeah. needs to be perfect um, yeah but it's been a, been a great journey and I, I continue to learn so much from you you actually have a really good eye for design quite a surprise there <laughs> what do you mean surprise, bro? I mean, come on. Yeah, no, look, I think we're both pedantic. I think it shows in the way we build our brands. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a fun process. I think the thing with design is patience and mm -hmm. involvement. I know you're picking your new book cover at the moment. You've been WhatsApping me some options and, you know, some, it, it just evolves. You know, I've always got dozens and dozens of options for my book covers and, you know, to get it just right always takes a bunch of chiseling and a lot of focus. And especially mm. when you're doing it with somebody else. Now you've got somebody else's taste, somebody else's brand that you need to take into consideration. I mean, I experienced this in a, in a massive way when I was writing a book with somebody. You know, Iraj Abadian mm -hmm. is an academic, deeply wise and profound in his thinking on economics. And then me trying to bring that information across in a more simple manner was quite the job and here we are after months of working so if you haven't checked out our website go and check it out the expansive pod what's it what is it the expansive.com yeah it's the expansive.com yeah yeah that's it yeah and uh we've got everything's new our new cover so if you like it let us know uh it'll be really great but let's get stuck into today's topic because i think it's a topic that i speak about a lot on my master classes i know you do as well and a lot of your clients have uh brought it up over the last few weeks and we wanted to chat about this and also you know eric if you think about it many years ago you and i and who was it i think it was mark or patrick who was on stage in cape town this question actually came up from the audience mm, and we actually unpacked right. this mm. exact question as well but i think it's always good to revisit so do you want to set us up and uh, get us going with it yeah so you know i've been um quite consistent in creating new videos and one of the topics that I just feel like it pops up in my coaching sessions almost all the time is around morning routines, you know, and I think partly why it pops up is because that is like the one part of your day that you have quite a bit of control over. And so to make sure that you nail your morning routine can really have a profound impact on the rest of your day. But I have a bit of a gripe with how most people speak about morning routines, because I feel for most of it, what actually happens is that we just copy and paste the routines of others. And if you go onto, um, onto YouTube or if you go and, and, and Google, you know, morning routines, you'll find all of these lists, like the morning routines of successful leaders, successful people, um, of artists, you know, and it'll take you through this entire checklist 
of things to do. And I just think like it's it's a horrible way of approaching a morning routine. Like it's okay. a good bit of time to be very intentional. And so I thought today what we could do is we could talk about, well, I'd love to know what your morning routine looks like at the moment and how that's perhaps evolved over time because that's what we need to apply to a morning routine is nuance. And I have an idea or two around it, um, as I'm sure that you do. But what does your morning routine look like at the, in the moment? You know, I love what you said there, because I think that what we must realize is that we are not the same as anybody else and trying to mm. copy somebody else's. And this came up actually in that talk that we did. Somebody from the audience said, you know, but that's not the way I do my morning. And I'm most probably a nocturnal person. It takes me a while to wake up in the morning and my routine is different. And I think mm. that's also important to take into account is that everybody is different. And some people need to give themselves more um, sort of structure and some people need to take away some structure and I am the latter I have mm. so much uh, ritual and so much habit forming ideas I have to almost sometimes just say to myself it's okay not to wake up at five this morning sleep in other people mm. need to say dude get out of bed you know you need to actually get out of bed and I think it's most people suffer from the need for motivation um, I have a need for relaxation and that is just the way my, my sort of morning routine goes. But, but look, my morning routine it, it consists of three things. And it's always three things. And I think that's what's important that we need to, for me, what's important to highlight. However you break your routine down, you have to touch on the three aspects of who you are. The first aspect is emotional. And I think that we all know that your emotional fitness, your emotional focus, your emotional trauma, whatever it is that you wake up with in the morning has a dramatic effect on the rest of your day. And so that that's really important. And, I, and I'll unpack that a little bit just now. The second one is mental. I use journaling to try and figure out my mental state, where I'm at, write about the things that bothered me and I appreciated from the day before, things that I'm intending for the day ahead. And then physical. So um, emotionally meditating, mentally preparing and physically moving in order to be able to get the best out of myself. But I think there's one thing that we need to also understand that it's not just about the morning ritual, but it's about the evening ritual before you sleep to get a great night's sleep so that your morning ritual can be actually more fruitful and more powerful. And, you know, I wear that aura ring and it's given me such great insights into my sleep habits. And I know that when I've had mm. really good deep sleep and REM sleep, wow, my energy, my focus, my mood is so much better. So getting into bed at nine o'clock, into a cool bed, a cool room, um, not having eaten too late and having teas that maybe can put you into a more slumber state, meditating in a place to get your brain waves into a theta state, that ritual that sets you up for the morning ritual, I think sometimes is even more important because if you have a bad yeah. night's rest, no matter what your morning ritual is, it's just not even a go, you know, you can't even do it. So that's kind of yeah. where I want to start with. Uh, Eric, why don't you jump into yours and then we can unpack. That's, but. that's really excellent, you know, because I think um, the conversation around morning routines isn't actually about the routine. It's like, it's not about the routine itself. It's not about the fact that you have to um, only have a, a well thought out and well designed morning routine. It's actually part of a bigger picture, which is that you have to sequence the events in your life. And that's what you mm. are like referring to here is that mm. like, don't just think about your morning routine. Even that is constricting and it's on its own. You need to think of the mm. night before because also, mm. why do you want to have a good morning routine? Because you want to have a good afternoon and morning going into that, mm. right? So like mm. everything is a setup for the next thing. And therefore, you need to make sure that you're always thinking about what that next step is going to be in the design of all of these things, the rituals, habits, routines that you are creating. Um, to tell you what mine looks like at the moment, I, I get up at, at, at about five o'clock in the morning. Um, I also like... The night before, I'm quite consistent, go to bed at 10. I always have the aircon quite low because I've also mm. seen that like having a, a cooler room temperature yeah. helps you to sleep better. Dan yeah. always really complains about it because she freezes at night. Um, but for me, that's quite comfy. And then pretty much without fail, I'm woken up at about 5 a.m. by two German shepherds. Um, yeah. That means it's, it's time to go. Uh, I go down and make coffee and then I, I sit down. Uh, the first thing I do is I meditate and I still... Even after all this time, I still do that Joe Dispenza meditation, uh, the A mm. meditation. Do you still do it? Mm -hmm. I use Abundance or that one or Botech. Depending how much time I have, Botech's blessing of the energy centers. The Abundance yes. one is really powerful. It puts you into a state of wholeness. 
Like you don't need anything actually. Mm. And then the morning one. It all depends on timing. Have you got yeah. the abundance one, Eric? I was going to say, the abundance one is just very long though. It's like an hour. Hey. No, it's not. It's only 20 minutes long. The last okay. 40 minutes is just music. Oh, yes, so right. you okay. only need to do 20 minutes and then the last 40 minutes you can put yourself, I put myself into a state of excitement, ease and love for mm -hmm. abundance for three or four or five minutes at each. And that takes me to about a 35 minute meditation, but it's a beautiful process mm. either way. So if you, if you are like looking at ways of getting into meditation, I really think the AM meditation or this abundance meditation, mm. the easy mm. ways to get into it. Uh, so Dr. Joe Dispenza. So mm. after I've done a bit of meditation, um, I'll then sit down and I'll start looking at my day. Uh, at my mm. calendar, at my to-do list, and I'll just kind of see how do I want to even sequence those events to make sure that I'm spending the most amount of time being creative and then mm. the rest of my time focusing on admin stuff when I'm like done with my creative uh, endeavors mm. and tasks for the day. Mm. And after that, like I'll, I'll go wake up Dan and I'll, I'll start my day. And mm. it's it's such a simple process. Like my, mm. my morning routine is so uncomplicated. And if mm. I look at how it was many years ago, like it's night and day, you know, it's evolved mm. a hell of a lot. And the reason why it's evolved is because I've also realized that your morning routine isn't about the practices. It's about the outcome of those practices. Mm. So that's why copy and pasting a routine doesn't work because the mm. outcome that I'm trying to create for myself in the morning is to have a good mental state for the day is to be in mm. a state where I know I'm going to be effective for the day. And I can get there through many different ways. I found mm. over time that meditation helps me really get into that state but if i can't meditate mm. for the day and i'm journaling or i'm going for a run or i'm listening to my favorite song those things will do the same thing they'll get me in yes. that same mental state nice. and so you can actually get to a stage where your morning routine has different practices in it but it still puts mm. you into the same or creates the same mm. output for you um every single day i think I think the problem sometimes that I feel is, and, and Angela Deichmann, a lady that I worked a lot with, with shadow work and that sort of thing, she, uh, she said to us, when you get into meditation, be careful not to apply religious guilt for when you miss one. Mm. And I thought that was really powerful because what happens is we put ourselves up and then when, when we don't achieve X, Y, and Z, then we feel double upset, upset with ourselves and also then upset that we didn't do it. And then the rest of the day is like, it's not as good as it needs to be. So you're right. It, 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 firstly, we need to be easy with it. As long as we're finding something that clicks us, engages us and catalyzes us into having a good day. And look, some days, you know, last Saturday, I was on the farm with my parents. I got up in my PJs and I went to bed in those same PJs on a Saturday. You know, I just I just needed one of those days. You know what I mean? I was <laughs> napping all day and my and we were laughing with my mom and dad. My dad doesn't smell that well. And we're just laughing that like I haven't showered. My dad says, ah, it doesn't matter. You know, my mom's like, oh, you need to shower. Not that I smelled, but we had a good <laughs> laugh about it. But I think it's as important to have pajama days. It's as important to have becoming one with the couch days as it is to have very energetic days. So, you know, I made that video a little while back that balance is a fallacy. You know, it's a, it's about obsession with stillness, mm -hmm. obsession with calmness, and then just a period of calmness, you know. And and I think what happens is that we work ourselves up so much, and, and maybe I'm just talking about myself, and I know this about you as well, is that we work ourselves into such a state of focus and obsession and drive that we forget that it's okay to have pajama days and it's okay not to be guilty about those. And you know, the truth is everybody's struggling from overconsumption of something. Everybody's struggling mm. with too much of something, too little of something else. This is a human condition. And I think sometimes because it's secret and it's only in our own heads, we, we think it's only us, you know, mm. but I want to, I want to take this one step further, Eric, I, you know, morning rituals are great. And I think they must be spoken about. What, what about language rituals? And, one of the podcasts I was listening to was sh shifting two words. One of them was when somebody asks you how you are, instead of saying I'm fine or I'm good, why don't you say I'm absolutely outstanding? And what it does, it changes your energy and it changes the person receiving it. So if you next time you're grocery shopping and then the lady or the gentleman says, how, how are you doing? Instead of saying I'm fine, how are you? Say, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm unbelievable. I'm outstanding. Mm. How are you doing? Mm. And you'll see that person will feel a little bit like, oh my God, I also need to step up here. You know, you're, that person can't be like, I'm, I'm also fine, you know? <laughs> and, and, and I think that ritual, if we're talking about rituals here, you know, that, that ritual of uplifting your energy on purpose really does have a fantastic repercussion. The second one is when somebody, you know, you have somebody in your life and I'm sure uh, many, everybody does, is that somebody always says, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about this. I'm so sorry about that. It's the first thing they say. It's the most, the thing they say the most. 
And what sorry does, it gets you to be a bit superior when somebody says it to you. So for example, if you're running late for somebody instead of in, for something, instead of saying, I'm sorry when you arrive, rather say, thank you so much for waiting for me. Mm. And immediately what that person does is like, okay, I'm feeling grateful from somebody and I'm now res responding in gratitude. And the, mm. the podcast I was listening to is, um, the dad was left with three kids and the mom was phoning to make sure everybody was okay. She had gone away for business for a few days and she kept saying, I'm so sorry I've done this to you. And he said to her, why don't you just say thank you for doing this for us? You know, mm, and immediately when the mom started doing that, that ritual of moving from, I'm sorry to thank you. I'm good to, I'm absolutely outstanding changes, not your morning routine, but changes your dynamic of language and engagement. So, as much as it's important to do morning routines, now we understand that night routines because of sleep and quality of sleep will become so important. And then um, the language routine. And before I close off and I'll leave you to this is I was listening to another, you know, she's, you know, traveling eight hours, right? Before, Four, you, before you get yeah. to this podcast, can you remember the previous podcast name? Hum, make your business hum. No, 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 not ours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. To, but thank you yeah um, go, uh yeah listen to that episode yes, yes yeah. there are no podcasts besides this one in the world eric what are you talking about this is the only podcast in the universe of podcasts it was um Ru uh, branson russell what's his name the secrets of the internet what marketing secrets oh yeah, yeah. Uh, russell brunson russell brunson yeah 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 it was him okay he, he was talking about it yeah um he's a bit religious for me so as soon as he starts going left, going religious, I'm like, okay, I can't listen to this. Cheers. But he's got some really good stuff. Anyway, that's just, that's just me. So um, another thing I listened to, and this is also really important because if we're thinking about ritual is they did a study. This is not from him. This is another podcast. Uh, they did a study of top CEOs around the world. Do you know the most common trait of top CEOs around the world? Guess. What do you think? As in a, a behavioral trait or a mindset? A uh, behavioral trait. Um, and, and look, because we, we, we as in, yeah, as okay, behavioral reading. trait. Yeah, you know, that's the thing is that most people think it's a degree, reading, middle class upbringing, a father in their lives, something like that, right? I mean, that's kind mm -hmm. of where you lean back to. The number one most common trait is sweating, exercise. Mm -hmm. Is that most, the, the most common trait between all CEOs, top CEOs around the world is, is exercise. And I think that's a really important thing to do because, mm -hmm. you know, I got back yesterday from a big day at Vodacom, traveling, signing books, a whole bunch of different things. And when I got back to Cape Town, I was just feeling low. My energy was low. I was irritable. And I decided I need a run. Man, 10K run, it was hard. My legs were burning, but I got back and I was in a totally different mood. And I think exercise mm. as a routine in your at least four to five times a week where you really push yourself is a fantastic thing. You know, it's, mm. uh, it's a fantastic uh, ritual to have. Anything from you? Listen, I think that's great. Um, I'll just summarize that. I think, you know, we, we started speaking about morning rituals and routines, but that it's really wrapped in a much larger theme, which is, that you have to pay attention to how you sequence all these habits, routines, and rituals in your life. And that ultimately, like, I think the power of a morning routine is that it, it really bookmarks your day. Like, you know, it, it really is the start of your day. It's, that it's the moment where you can start changing your energy, start focusing more on what's going to happen for the day. It gives you an opportunity to pause instead of just going from bed to work. Like, it just gives you that pause to, like, just be a bit more strategic, a bit more focused coming into the day. So... One thing about morning routines is have one. That's like that. That's a good starting point. Just have one. Like doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Just have something. And then in the process of creating this morning routine of yours, don't copy. Focus on the outcome that you are trying to create, and not just on the practices itself. And when I was speaking about it in the video, I said um, three outcomes that you might want to focus on is connection with other people. Um, how can I be more effective in the day? And what is my mental state going to be like in the day? And those are the outcomes, but the practices inside of that could be vastly different. Anything, yes. And, and then finally is then to take your take it easy. Like don't don't be overly dogmatic about it. Don't be hard on yourself when you miss a morning. Like this is a fluid, ever-evolving process. And what your morning routine looks like today isn't what it's going to be like a year from now when you are traveling all over the show again, doing keynotes in the biggest, uh, on the biggest stages. Um, it's going to be very different, you know?
So yes. we have to also just, I, I think that's why the outcome based approach is so important. Like the outcome changes, your routine changes, and that's perfectly okay. You're not tied yeah. and, and married to a practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, I think we also don't have any kids. So I think anybody listening to this is also obviously saying, wait till you have two kids. Now you've got to <laughs> feed them, change them. There's no routine. Like those kids take over your life, right? So another stat that they said was that people without kids are actually happier long term than kid people with kids. And as much as everybody who's interviewed on their deathbed says, I'm definitely have my kids without not having kids kids bring financial pressure they break your own structure they break you know and you could have a, 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 a black sheep and that kid could even give you more gray hairs so look eric and i we've got dog fur fur kids and uh, for now we're quite happy with that i imagine your wife wants a real kid as well eric sometime soon so you're going to be in that no no wow um no yeah, the, the biggest that's a bombshell is- the biggest excitement yeah. of my life is that we are taking the two boys to the ocean next week. The ocean? Where are you taking wait, them? Man. Uh, Where? Somewhere in K- KZN. Wow. Um, They're going to be barking at those waves. They're going to be like... <laughs> those two pups love water as it is. Like they're obsessed with water. Wow. So one wow. Way to, to take them there. Wow. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, look, thank you so much for everybody to listening. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead, Eric, especially with uh, the dogs in the ocean. I'm on my way to Cedarburg for the men's retreat for four days. Mm. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. If you think this podcast can help anybody, please do share it. Please leave us a comment and look after yourselves. And if you can, look after somebody else as well. Great to be chatting to you, Eric. Cheers. Ciao.